Okay, so today for the EE445L class, we're going to be going over how to use our TM4C boards to output data over UART and receive this data on our PC uh, using PuTTY so we can display this in a terminal. Um, this will give us the ability to print out debug statements or just print out any data that we need. Um, it's a rather slow process, so use it sparingly, but this will give you access to printing. Um, the alternative is to print it to the LCD or, um, or to go through the memory and look while you're in a debug session. Uh, both of those weren't very ideal for me, so that's why we're going over how to set up the UART. So the first thing, uh, you want to have PuTTY installed, so you go to PuTTY install, the downloads page, download here. You want to do the 32-bit installer for the Windows, um, all defaults, uh, unless you know your 64-bit, then do the 64-bit. Yeah, so click that, run that, all defaults. Once you're done with that, we're going to do a couple things to our project to get it ready. So the first thing, you want to have a standard IO.h included, and you want to include this UART file. This is provided in the uh, Valvanoware uh, include folder. Um, comes with all the necessary functions, except for this one, uh, which you can copy, pause the video, copy it down, it's a real short function. Um, this allows you to print out a new line uh, so you don't get garbled nonsense on your output window. So the first thing you want to do, you want to go to your source. Well, I, okay, so after you add the, the include uh, rebuild, you should see that under your main file. Then you go to the source, and you want to do add existing. Then find the Valvanaware include uh, folder. Uh, by the way, your project should be inside Valvanaware to have access to this include folder. So like, I have mine underscore lab2 underscore, the underscores are so it appears at the top. And this gives me access to the include folder. So in here, scroll down to the bottom, there's uart.c. Don't do zero in, don't do one, one in, do uart.c. Click that, click add, click close. You should see it down in your source file now. Uh, the next thing, and you can rebuild at this point, you will probably get a lot of errors, um, which is fine, they should fix with this next step. So you wanna click on this little green diamond, manage runtime environment. You wanna go under compiler, under IO, and you wanna click these three boxes. You might not need the standard error, um, and the file system, you can set that up if you want. It's a hassle. There's some starter code in the uart.h or uart.c file. You can uncomment that out and try to make that work. But anyways, for today, just click all three of these. And under here, click user for all three. Um, as you can see, that redirects the standard IO functions to the ones that we defined in our uart.c file. So click OK once you have that. You can see this new option, compiler, and the retarget. Um, yeah, so then once you have this, before you do anything with UART, you want to have this called a UART init. That's inside the UART file. Um, that'll initialize everything you need relating to the UART. And then you can have yourself a print function. You want to probably do it in this format. You can do successive calls to like out string or out char, but if you want to mess around with the strings, you should have a char buffer. So you can have um, a string that you can work with in format. So you have some sort of loop to go through your data or whatever. If you're just printing out a debug statement, you want to have like a call to print. Um, this is the format. You want to use this f print f, which is in the uh, standard I/O. You pass your string buffer, then you do whatever formatting you want. If you don't uh, know how to format strings using s print f, uh, Google that. Um, then you can put your variables there. It'll format it nicely for you. 
And then you can use this called a UI out string with your string buff. And don't forget to uh, reset this with another call to S burn F or whatever before you use it again. And then I'll put your new line. That's that function at the top that we put in. Um, yeah, we have to do a few things to our header file so that we can redirect things. All these errors are fine. Um, you want to add these three uh, declarations. So a standard output char, standard and get char, standard error put char. These are things that are used. Um, so yeah, just put these at the bottom. Make sure there's a new line. And you can close that. Then you go to uart.c. And now you want to give them definitions. So uh, in this section in the input, uh, put it over here. You can pause the video, copy this, and put that in. Also put this in, and put this in. And that should be all. And then briefly, here is where the file uh, input output stuff is. Um, yeah, mess around with that at your own uh, risk. So once you have that, save it, close, rebuild, all that. And now you should be ready to print. And keep in mind that printing is very slow, so don't use it in a live setting if you have some sort of timing uh, that you need to be wary of. I would do it as like a post-processing. So like after you do your data dump, for example, in lab two, you can print out that data dump before you exit the program. Um, yeah, so now we now that we have all the software set up, I have my putty open. I'll close that real quick. We're going to putty. And we're gonna open our device manager. So once again, you should have all the necessary drivers and this shouldn't, uh, going through the device manager to find your board shouldn't be surprising you. You should have already done this. So you want to turn on your board. Uh, you can click the reset button if you want. And this thing will refresh. You'll see Stellaris virtual serial port. Mine's on COM4. Yours might be COM1, 2, whatever it is. So whatever the number, come over here in your settings for a putty and put COM4, for example, and go ahead and change the speed to 115200. Then you want to right-click this, go to Properties, Under Port Settings, change the bit per second to 115200, and all the other ones should be default, the same as I have here. Click OK. Um, You'll be done with that. Um, under connection type, set it to serial. Um, and then under windows, this is helpful. The default for the amount of scroll backs in your window is quite low. So for this project, I needed 4,097 lines. So I've set it to 500 to have some uh, room to play with. And then you want to click default settings and save. That'll make this the default when you open up Putty every time. So once you have your uh, program and its print statements, all of that, uh, you can go ahead and reset your board and then click open and quickly reset the terminal. I clear everything. There's some garbage in my terminal. Uh, right now my board is collecting data and now it's outputting and it outputs all my results. If I want to copy this and put in a text file, I can go copy all the clipboard, a clipboard and make a text file. If my session gets corrupted, like the power gets interrupted or whatever, um, there'll be an option to restart your session. Um, and then, yeah, you can clear your scroll back or reset the terminal, uh, whichever one you prefer. I normally just reset the terminal and I'll clear again. And when you turn off your board, you'll get that. So this will have the restart session or you can close out and go through the opening process again. And that should get you started with a terminal that you can print out to. That's it for this.